Mic check, one, two. What's going on, y'all? Yeah. Yeah. All right, before I start my talk, I just want to say that I totally, totally would never, ever, 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 ever wear a purple shirt. Um, my lady thought I looked sexy in it, so I thought that, you know, I would uh, listen to her. <laughs> and um, that's what I love about my lady, is that we meet each other halfway. If she tells me something and she's right, I say she's right, and vice versa. That's one thing I really love about her. So. Anyway, number five. Uh, what I want to talk to you today about is breaking the dysfunction of drama in our relationships through conversations. I saw a lot of heads like, hey man, how are you? <laughs> it's all in good work. So this is, this is my lady, her name is Nefra. And as you can see, we're at a uh, jewelry store, a uh, ring shop. Because we're getting ready for a two-part conversation. First part of that conversation is something called a wedding. Ever heard of it? Yeah. So, a wedding is a com coming before a group of our friends, our closest friends, and professing our love for each other to open, and see them there with a kiss from her, to open up a bigger conversation, a lifelong conversation called marriage and family. So that's never done. That's what we're doing. So now this is me hoping that she does not pick the most expensive ring. Well, <laughs> another thing that's inside my mind is that if history repeats itself, I hope that I can break the cycle. My mother and father were a failure with the relationship that they had, and I want to be successful in my relationship. So what I did is that I went out and started doing my homework. I started talking to all of the guys that I know and all the females that I know about relationships. I went to ball courts, and ballrooms, beauty salons, street corners, shopping malls. I talked to experts and I talked to everyday people, all about what is the biggest challenge in relationships and how do we overcome it so I could be equipped for the relationship that I was about to get into. So, um, as I walked the streets, I made a documentary, and I talked to, I mean, every, anybody that, any space that I was in, I was talking about what's the biggest challenge in a relationship and how do you overcome it. And one thing that I realized from having those conversations is that men and women talk totally different languages. Did you know that? And not only do we talk different languages, we're not even talking to each other for that reason. They don't understand, I don't know what they're talking about. So, I, I, <laughs> so when, to me, sometimes when you're looking for something, um, you know, getting, wanting to get married, I wanted to try to find a place where I could kind of learn what not to do or what to do in a relationship. And sometimes if you can't find it out in the world, you have to be the one to create it. So I created something called Together Apart. Because we were having these conversations apart from each other that we, have to, we need to have together. So we have men on one side, women on the other side, and we just talk. Because talk works. So in these spaces that we create, it was, it's all about breaking the cycle of the relationships that we may have seen in our own lives. The way, I, the way I got this template was a, pro, a project I did called the Hip Hop Project. And what I did was I got a bunch of young people together so that they could talk about things that were going on in their lives. And we took those conversations and then we created uh, uh, songs from those conversations. And we made an album and Bruce Willis and Queen Latifah made a documentary that, uh, uh, chroni that chronicled the evolution of that program. Now, what I took away from it, because during the movie, is that a lot of times as parents, I don't know if y'all went through this, parents always tell you what you need to do. Do as I say, but not do as I do. So I got faced with my own stuff, trying to tell other people what they needed to do. I needed to deal with my own stuff. And as these young people, because um, I saw, with the film, we won 50 film festival awards all around the country, and I uh, went with the film and engaged people in conversations, and saw a pattern that the reason why most of us, me, you, us, them, they, all of we, have issues in relationships is because we inherited from our parents. 
There's a cycle of dysfunction being handed down generation to generation. And we're not talking about it. So um, that led me to uh, want to, to, to go back to my own childhood. I'm from a little island in the West Indies called Nassau. Anybody been to Nassau before? Nassau. So I, I was born and raised there. Though it's a beautiful place, there are a lot of ugly memories for me when I was living there. My foster mother, excuse me, my uh, biological mother um, and my father, they had a, uh, a physical conversation, if you know what I'm saying. And that, <laughs> that physical conversation, uh, nine months later, she, she gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. That's me, by the way. So, and uh, six months later, she left me with a friend to come to America, um, but she never came back. And during the time that I stayed in this home with this lady, uh, it was a very abusive home, and the child welfare agency eventually came and removed me from the home and placed me in an orphanage, the Children's Emergency Hostel. And while I was there, I met a social worker by the name of Kathleen Brown, who took me um, from the home, uh, and I lived with her from the age of five to the age of nine. And I always like to say she tried to give me heaven, and I gave her hell. <laughs> like most kids who have a tough situation. And, but she was patient with me, and she persevered with me, and she always would talk to me. We would go out in the front lawn, this was the house where I grew up, and we would go out in the front lawn, and we would just talk for hours upon hours, and just, I guess, I guess working through my stuff. So, um, uh, my behavior got to a point that the family just said, either he goes or we go. And I didn't want to put her through that anymore, so I left and uh, went back to the orphanage. Um, and at 14 years old, I was reunited with my biological mother, came here to America, and met with her in the, in the, in the state of Brooklyn, I call her. <laughs> in the, and while I was there, you know, when animosity meets guilt, it's not a pretty picture, ended up on the streets of Brooklyn, wherever I laid my head was home. And I stayed with this friend and that friend. And every house, house I stayed in, I observed the relationships that were happening in these, these houses. Most kids that are homeless, that's what they do. That's sometimes you don't see homeless youth because they, they couch hop, they couch surf. And, but what I got from it was that I was learning. I was learning what, that our relationships are not working because we're not talking to each other. You know, whether we're texting or, you know, two people could be in the same room. You want to enter, surf the internet, gaming, but we're not turning the devices off and talking to each other. Um, so we're together apart. My whole goal is to bring men and women together and ask the hard questions, because I'm not afraid to ask the hard questions. Sometimes we get together and say the cliche stuff, but I say ask the questions that we're afraid to ask, because the, the conversation that you're afraid to ask in the beginning of a relationship is the thing that ends up breaking the relationship. Can I get an amen? Amen. Right? So, so the way I break it down is this, is that whether it's the LGBTQ community or the heterosexual community, there's always a male and female principle. And the way I break it down is that these two pieces are really how we are. We're just constantly in discovery of ourselves, trying to figure out who we are. And the goal is to, um, any, any graphic art students here? You know, this space in the middle right here is called the negative space. And it's so funny, that negative space is where we can either break or make our relationships. And it all happens in communication. Relationship happens in communication. Now, either the glass is half empty or half full, meaning that if you want to look at this photo, either they're coming together or falling apart. And communication is where we either fall apart or come together. So in these spaces, we have six rules of engagement. Number one, speak your truth and accept theirs. A lot of times while people cheat, is because they're not being honest. And a lot of times they're not being honest is because they're not being, they're worried about, will this person accept the truth that I have to tell them? I know for me, you know, I've, I've made mistakes in my relationships in the past, and one of the biggest mistakes that I've made is just being honest. Maybe I'm the only one. But sometimes hard to be honest because you want to control what the other person is going to react. You know, they say, well, they, don't, they, they can't handle my truth. No, you can't handle your own truth, so that's why you can say the truth. But, so it's a two-way street. Be able to speak your truth. And there's so much knowledge that happens when we speak our truth to each other. Next rule inside the space is staying engaged. You ever hear something you don't want to hear? What do you do? Check out. I don't want to hear this. Uh, all right, I had enough. I'm out of here. You slam the door. Don't you like slamming the door? Feels good. Boom! 
<laughs> it was real good to see people. But stay engaged. Stay in the conversation. Stay in it because it's bigger than you. Number three is experience discomfort. Some of the best advice or best conversations I've ever had with people in my life didn't necessarily feel good. But when I, when I hear the truth, may not feel good, but I stay in it and I really listen. And that's an opportunity to grow. But if you, if you can't take the, even the, the discomfort, you don't stay in the conversation. And these are part of the rules that are inside creating these safe spaces. Number four, give what you want to get. Two forms of matter can occupy the same space at the same time. Most people argue, the arguments are you trying to get your point across to somebody else, and you're both trying to do it at the same time. So you know what really works for that? Listen. When we listen to each other, because in these spaces, you can't talk while the other side is talking. And the more we practice listening, the more we give other people, Stephen Covey says, uh, uh, see first to understand and to be understood. The more you give the other person the floor to listen to what they have to say and make sure that you got it, you open up the door to give back what you have to say. And number five is accept and expect non closure. This relationship conversation has been going on for a long time and it's going to be going on for a long time. But if we're, if we're in the conversation, it's the most important thing to be in communication about whatever the issue is. And knowing that at that moment, at the end of that particular conversation, it may not be closed, but that's okay because you're in it. Be able to accept and expect that you may have non-closure. Number six is to be open to new information. 